welcome to us again in Egypt the science and arts channel owned by Eng. Mohammed Abdul Hamid Saleh offers you all that is new in the field of different sciences and arts, so welcome to us again. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته مرحبا بكم أيها السادة مرة أخرى مع قناة علوم وفنون حيث يوم تعنا في كل مرة المهندس محمد عبد الحميد صالح بموضوع علمي جديد داعين لها أن يتقبل منا صالح الأعمال واترككم لمشاهدة المادة العلمية ولا تنسوا الاشتراك في القناة Welcome to a very very exciting episode Yes please listen to me did you know that the first people to generate electricity, the ancient Egyptians who were called the pharaohs, as they generated electricity more than 5,000 years ago through building the three pyramids called the Pyramids of Giza? We cannot address the issue of wireless transmission of electric energy without evoking the history of the American inventor, Nikola Tesla, 1856-1943 AD, the greatest electrical engineer in history, as some consider it and his success in transmitting energy wirelessly in several separate experiments. When two discharged gas lamps lit without wires depending on the magnetic field of alternating current, AC, produced by a voltage of high value and frequency. In fact, when examining the shape of the pharaonic key to life, we find a great similarity between it and the Tesla Tower for wireless communications which supports the opinion that the pharaohs were the first to use electricity. The pharaohs are the first to transmit electricity wirelessly, and this is already installed in the images of pharaonic temples. And the matter is more than this if we know that some pharaonic temples did not find inside them any stoves for lighting or niches inside the walls to put lamps in them. But found shapes similar to light bulbs, but without wires, and as it appears in the prints, it seems that the pharaohs used giant three-dimensional transparent lamps, which have a connection with a battery or a generator to illuminate the place as appears in one of the hieroglyphic inscriptions of a huge pharaonic man who carries in his hand what resembles a glass lamp. This glass lamp pear-shaped inside which an inscription of a long wavy snake connected from below with a small base in the shape of a lotus rose and connected by a long wire that ends to a square base in the form of a battery on which a man symbolized by the god of air sits in addition to a large monkey carrying two knives and sits on the opposite side. As archaeologists who support the fact that the pharaohs discovered electricity indicate, they assert that the ancient hieroglyphic writing under the inscription indicates that it is a picture of an ancient Egyptian priest who used to present people with a light bulb and the monkey carrying the two knives is to warn people against being exposed to a thunderbolt touching this lamp. In order to speak fairly about the pharaoh's discovery of electricity more than 5,000 years ago, we must mention the opinion of the researcher Christopher Dunn. In 1997 Christopher Dunn published his theory in a book Giza Power Plant. After nearly 20 years of thinking, analysis and visits to the Egyptian pyramids. Hundreds of his theory have been adopted and it has been referred to in dozens of books that were later issued and considered it to be compatible with the mind as it provided a convincing alternative to the idea of royal tombs. And despite the intransigence of Egyptologists and their convulsion from the spread of the theory Dan until the matter came to Dan not granting personal permits to visit certain archaeological sites, such as the catacombs of the Serapium in Saqqara. Dan's theory answered many outstanding questions, such as, the Great Pyramid has no inscriptions or pictures, and it is closed simply because it is a machine it does not need to be opened as long as it is working. The narrow corridors and openings, their accuracy, the severity of their straightness, and their solid walls, because they are not designed primarily for people and funerals to walk in, but rather for gases, chemical fluids and sound waves. 
neither Dan nor anyone else considered this theory to be the end and the ultimate key to the pyramid's puzzle rather, he considered that only a crust of what is greater he focused his study only on the Great Pyramid due to the availability of manuscripts of his predecessors paving the way for those who come after him to discover more. Dan's theory asserts that human progress throughout history has not flowed in a linear equation rather, it is more logical that it traveled in waves, up and down. Previously, the period of 8,000 years BC, regardless of what we learned that humans were only hunters or lived by gathering and gathering. But in reality we see it quite the opposite. In 1977 Christopher Dunn was reading Peter Tompkins, The Secrets of the Great Pyramid, where the book was describing the engineering miracles in building the Great Pyramid of its followers of the four original points in amazing accuracy and from the stepped ceiling in the great foyer and the straightness of the four star niches that were indicating the stars of the sky with a deviation of less than 0.02%. And Christopher Dunn considered that the pyramids are gigantic power stations they convert the cosmic energy and the energy resulting from the seismic energy vibrations of the Earth's crust into energy that a person can use in his life. And the second point is to create a healthy environment on a large scale in the vicinity of the pyramids and the Nile Valley make people in their surroundings enjoy a healthy balance and harmony and reach the regeneration of body cells. Now we are talking about the secrets of the pyramid. There are two narrow corridors leading to the Queen's Room, a northern corridor and a southern corridor when Christopher Dan began the search. He found traces of a foreign substance on the walls of the corridor in the northern corridor leading to the Queen's room when he analyzed it. A result of hydrated zinc appeared then in the Queen's room he clearly found other traces on its walls that he analyzed. It was zinc chloride Dan assumed that the other substance coming from the southern corridor was hydrogen chloride acid. The goal of that chemical process was to get hydrogen Dan thought, was hydrogen the final product they wanted? If it is, then it can be obtained in more easy ways than that there is no doubt that hydrogen is not the only one that is needed, most likely they wanted the hydrogen atom and not the part as a whole. The process of dissociation of the hydrogen molecule is carried out resulting in one hydrogen atom passing through several stages inside the pyramid, which we will talk about shortly. This results in a beam of maser. The difference between laser and maser is that the laser is the amplification of the light beam, light amplification. As for the maser, it is the amplification of short waves, microwave amplification. The first maser was manufactured in 1954 in America and six years later the laser appeared. Just as lasers are used in long distances, so maser is also used to transmit radar and radio waves over long distances and converting it into sound waves. Part of that energy is used to break the hydrogen molecule into two hydrogen atoms. While Christopher Dan saw that the corridor had a completely different task from that claim especially with the presence of 27 empty cavities on both sides of the foyer and those cavities used to contain resonators in the past. The large foyer was performing the task of collecting the energy produced from the Earth's interior inside the hall itself and converting it into sound waves. Part of that energy is used to break the hydrogen molecule into two hydrogen atoms. What a great civilization! The Egyptian civilization was the pioneer of science in the whole world, and the secret of the disappearance of that civilization is still a mystery that has not been revealed by history. In the end, we can only thank the one who prepared this work, engineer Muhammad Abdel Hamid Saleh and do not forget to press the like and share button if you like the video. Peace be upon you, and God's mercy and blessings be upon you.